What happens when turtles grow to the size of rhinos? This is the tale of the biggest sea turtle to ever exist. As massive as up to three young humans standing on top of each other in length, this beast had a life you'll want to hear about. Archelon lived in the late Cretaceous period, approximately 100 to 66 million years ago. Its name originates from the ancient Greek words aki, meaning first, and kon, meaning turtle. Its scientific name, Archelon Ischyrus, straight up represents its immense size and power. But what makes this guy really stand out is the fact that it is recognized as the largest turtle species ever documented. Its most substantial specimen measures a remarkable 15 feet, or 4.5 meters, from head to tail, and weighs up to 3.2 tons, or 7,054 pounds. Fossils of Archelon have been exclusively discovered within the Pier Shale Formation in North America. This geographical find tells us a lot about the prehistoric marine ecosystems of that era, like the diversity and dynamics of ancient sea life. But we'll get into its discovery in more detail later. First, we have got to talk about what it really looked like. This massive turtle had a unique hooked beak and powerful jaws, perfect for crushing hard-shelled critters like crustaceans and mollusks as it lazily drifted through the ocean. But what might surprise you is that it did not have a very hard shell like other turtles. The main reason for this was its sheer size. A solid shell at that size would have made the Archelon sink like a rock. So, to counter this, it had dense rib bones and a lighter covering, which provided enough buoyancy to prevent sinking, while still allowing control while swimming. The shell would have also had ridges running down its back, adding to its protection against larger predators like mosasaurs. We'll talk about its shell in more detail later in the video. Now, despite its size, the Archelon may have still been vulnerable to attacks, especially targeting its delicate flippers. But there would have been easier prey options for predators, making direct attacks on the Archelon less common. Apart from all these unique features, Archelon also had incredibly long flippers, and yet it's believed they weren't the strongest swimmers. Analysis of their structure suggests they may have been more suited to calmer, shallower waters. However, evidence suggests that it could have managed short bursts of speed, possibly allowing it to catch moving prey or even travel in the open ocean if necessary. Coming to its skull, it was as massive as the turtle itself, measuring up to 3.3 feet long or 100 centimeters. To put it into perspective, that's the size of an adult penguin. It had a long and narrow head with a beak that looked like it belonged to a bird of prey, but with a double-edged twist. The nostrils were elongated and pointed forward, making it stand out even more from other turtles. But perhaps the most interesting feature was Archelon's jaw. When it came to eating, its jaw worked like a hammer thanks to the articular bone, which was probably cushioned by cartilage. This allowed it to chomp down on its prey with ease. Speaking of prey, Let's talk about what this turtle liked to feast on. Archelon was all about the meat. It was a carnivore through and through. Its thick lower shell suggests it spent a lot of time chilling on soft, muddy seabeds, probably munching on slow-moving snacks like big mollusks and crustaceans. Back in the day, there were plenty of giant, thin-shelled bivalves around, perfect for Archelon's dinner table. But as time went on, these snacks became scarce in its habitat but it still had a pretty diverse diet, much like some modern turtles. It feasted on soft-bodied cephalopods like jellyfish and squid, suggesting it had varied predatory habits. With its jaws built for crushing, Archelon likely enjoyed munching on large crabs and mollusks too. The waters it inhabited were rich in thin-shelled shellfish, some as big as four feet in diameter, which would have provided ample sustenance. But Archelon might have also surfaced occasionally to forage for food. Apart from that, near where Archelon lived, there were lots of Neosaurus teeth lying around, hinting that they might have been on its menu too. And just like other sea turtles, Archelon probably hit the beach to lay its eggs. It would have dug a hole in the sand, popped in a bunch of eggs, and then left them to hatch on their own. No parenting for this big guy. We'll discuss how they reproduced later in the video. Young Archelons probably didn't hang around the coasts much, not even during breeding season, the largest Archelon, named Brigetta, is estimated to have lived up to 100 years old. It might have made its end while partially buried in mud, in a state called brumation. 
kind of like hibernation but underwater. There's been a long-held belief that marine turtles, including archelons, brewmate underwater just like freshwater turtles. But considering how often they had to come up for air to avoid drowning, that might not be quite right. As for where it lived, fossils found in states like Wyoming and North Dakota, specifically within the Pierre Shale Formation, give us clues about Archelon's habitat preferences during the late Cretaceous period. This giant turtle likely favored shallow sea environments, as indicated by these discoveries. Its ability to generate powerful strokes suggests it was well-equipped for cross-ocean migrations and could quickly get away from other aquatic predators if needed. Its preferred place to live was the northern region of the Western Interior Seaway, which has warmed to mild temperatures. This area was dominated by plesiosaurs, which really tell you about the diverse and competitive ecosystem in which this creature thrived. It was a muddy, oxygen-depleted habitat, with an average depth of possibly slightly more than 600 feet, or 182 meters. The water in this environment likely had a typical temperature of around 63 degrees Fahrenheit, or 17 degrees Celsius. This raises the question of how Archelon reproduced in such an environment. The simple answer is, it didn't. Archelon, much like present-day turtles, came ashore to lay eggs, and that's probably the only time it made its way to the shore. Once laid, these eggs would hatch, and the young turtles would have to navigate through predators to reach the safety of the ocean. With the exception of a few species, most modern turtles follow a consistent nesting behavior of excavating nests to lay their eggs. They typically create chambers in the sand or soil where they deposit their eggs. The female turtle initiates this process by using alternating scooping motions of her back legs to dig the nesting chamber after finding a suitable nesting spot. This nesting behavior is believed to have originated from Archelon. While it may have escaped the water to lay eggs, it still had to head back in there for survival. And that's where trouble was sometimes waiting for it. Archelon was massive, but natural predators like Mosasaurs, Allosaurus, and possibly even sharks like Cretoxyrena were a major threat to it. It was a giant, but predators could still target vulnerable areas like its flippers. However, the sheer size of the Archelon shell might have provided some protection against certain predators. At the very least, adult male Archelons, with their large size and sturdy bodies, would have been more challenging for predators to catch compared to other sea reptiles with slimmer frames. These guys likely used their hardened underside plates as a form of defense. Evidence from bite marks found near fossils also suggests that they may have been targeted by blind predator attacks. So, let's look into their armor and what it does for them in these situations. Archelon's carapace, the protective shell covering its back, consisted of eight neural plates on each side, nearest to the midline, and nine neural plates connecting the midline to the ribs. These plates were mostly uniform in size, except for two pairs. The plates corresponding to the eighth thoracic vertebrae were smaller, while the plate nearest to the tail was larger. Unlike other sea turtles, Archelon had 10 pairs of ribs, and also unlike other sea turtles, where the first rib meets the first pleural plate, Archelon's first rib was noticeably shorter than the second, covering only about three quarters of the length. The second to fifth ribs projected at right angles from the midline and measured an impressive 3.3 feet or 100 centimeters in length each in the holotype specimen. Its ribs increased in thickness vertically as they moved away from the midline. They were relatively larger and more well-developed than those of sea turtles, originating with a thickness of 0.98 inches or 2.5 centimeters and ending with around 1.6 to 2 inches or 4 to 5 centimeters. The carapace likely featured a row of ridges along the midline over the chest region, possibly totaling seven ridges, each peaking at 1 or 2 inches or 2.5 or 5 centimeters. Without a firmly jointed neck and pleural plates, the skin over the carapace was probably thick, strong, and leathery, providing support for the shoulder girdle. Archelon also had osteoclerotic structures, dense and heavy bone formations that likely served as ballasts in life, similar to the limb bones of whales and other deep sea animals. Now that we've talked about its shell in detail, it brings up the question, how did this turtle end up developing that massive carapace? Well, the truth is, the mystery of how the turtle acquired its iconic shell remained a hot topic for over 120 years, until 2008, when a groundbreaking discovery shed light on the matter. 
a unique 1.3 feet or 40 centimeter fossil found in China unveiled a reptile resembling a turtle but with only half of its shell intact. This species, named Odontochelus semitstasia, meaning toothed turtle with half a shell, sported a hard shell on its underside, similar to the plastron of modern turtles, but lacked the upper part or carapace. Remarkably, Odontochelus had enlarged ribs, indicating that the bottom part of the turtle shell evolved before the top. Since the fossil was unearthed in marine deposits, one hypothesis suggests that the evolution of the plastron served as a defense mechanism against predators, providing early turtles with protection from threats in their aquatic environment. Coming from beneath in a marine environment, the remarkable fossil of Odontochelus predates Proganochelus by roughly 10 million years, pushing back the origin of turtles to about 220 million years ago. In 2015, another big discovery further enhanced our understanding of the connection between turtles and other reptiles. Papakilis rosi, the grandfather turtle, is a small reptile measuring about 0.6 feet or 20 centimeters, but it boasted significantly enlarged and flattened ribs, distinguishing it from other fossil turtles. Unlike other turtles, Papakilis lacked a shell, indicating it likely represents a transitional form between lizard-like reptiles and turtles often referred to as a missing link. Papakilis shares similarities with other lizards, such as Unotosaurus africanus, featuring enlarged T-shaped ribs, elongated vertebrae, and a generally round body shape. Both species were terrestrial animals capable of digging. Unotosaurus was first thought to be a turtle ancestor way back in 1892. Nowadays, scientists believe the big ribs on Unotosaurus and Papakilis were more about stability for digging than anything else. They reckon Unotosaurus already had the same breathing setup as turtles, thanks to their sturdy rib cages. Plus, Papakilis' skull looks a lot like other reptiles, showing turtles are probably closer kin to modern lizards and snakes than other extinct reptiles. This idea is now widely accepted among researchers. Later on, after the Triassic period, turtles split into two main groups, the Pleurodires and the Cryptodires. Initially, neither group had the neck retraction mechanisms that are now their most obvious feature. Pleurodires, or side neck turtles, later folded their necks to the side of their shells, while Cryptodires, or hidden neck turtles, pulled their heads back and up into their shells. Both of these methods required complex changes to their neck bones and muscles, Today's turtles are either Pleurodires or Cryptodires. During the Triassic period, turtles protected their necks in various ways. For example, Proganochelus had a collar of horny spikes, while Paleocaris, another late Triassic turtle, had an extension of the carapace. Pleurodires are now less common, mostly found in the Southern Hemisphere, but they were once widespread both on land and in the waters around the coasts. Sea turtles and soft-shelled turtles both cryptodires are found worldwide. Santanachelus, a cryptodira from the early Cretaceous, had large salt glands under its eyes, essential for excreting excess salt from its seafood diet. In earlier times, turtles had movable metacarpal and short digits on their feet, similar to land turtles. Later on, these toe bones lengthened and became encased in flesh, and the feet evolved into flippers as sea turtle diversity exploded during the Cretaceous period. Some cryptodires even began an evolutionary journey back to land. Modern tortoises are descendants of sea-dwelling turtles, not directly from older land turtles. The specific changes involved in this transition aren't well documented, but many turtles returned to being toe walkers, and their shell ornamentation and shape varied greatly over time. Coming back to the Archelon, its impressive size and unique adaptations, such as its star-shaped plates for achieving neutral buoyancy, hold great evolutionary significance. These traits not only helped this creature thrive in the varied marine environments of the late Cretaceous period, but also offer valuable insights into the evolutionary transition from ancient creatures to modern sea turtles like the leatherback. Studying its features provides us with a window into the past shedding light on the evolutionary processes that have shaped the development of sea turtles over millions of years. But how was this beast of a turtle first discovered? The Archelon sea turtle was first unearthed by American paleontologist George Reba Wieland in 1895. He stumbled upon the holotype specimen, the very first fossil of its kind, within the Pier Shale geological formation in South Dakota. Wieland made this remarkable discovery along the shores of the Cheyenne River in Custer County. 
Interestingly, the specimen he found lacked its skull. But in 1897, another individual stumbled upon a fossilized skull of the turtle in the same area. Then, in 1902, yet another complete specimen was uncovered along the Cheyenne River. In more recent times, significant discoveries of Archelon skeletons have taken place in South Dakota in 1992 and North Dakota in 2002. The 1992 find was particularly notable as it yielded the largest specimen known at the time. This specimen, affectionately named Brigitte, was discovered in Oglala, Lakota County, South Dakota, and is currently on display at the Vienna Natural History Museum. All in all, these discoveries have greatly enriched our understanding of Archelon and its prehistoric environment. Of course, scientists have been able to classify this beast based on the fossils too. It is classified within the reptile class Reptilia, the order Testandines, the suborder Cryptodira, and the extinct family Protostegidae. And while it may resemble other sea turtles, Archelon doesn't share ancestry with any living or extinct species. In fact, its evolutionary path within the Protostegidae family is pretty unique, setting it apart from other sea turtles. As to what caused its extinction, it's speculated that as the seaway gradually moved southward, Archelon may have struggled to migrate along with it. And so, the increasing presence of new marine or mammalian species posing a threat to its eggs and hatchlings could have contributed to its extinction. The disappearance of giant protostegids coincides with the rise of Democolids, suggesting a shift in the marine ecosystem. Protostegids, including Archelon, are notably absent in Maastrichtian deposits, the latest Cretaceous period, likely due to a cooling trend. This cooling may have affected other turtles as well, but some species managed to survive, thanks to their thermoregulatory capabilities. It's estimated that average water temperatures dropped to around 45 to 54 degrees Fahrenheit, or 7 to 12 degrees centigrade, depending on CO2 levels. However, there is some evidence suggesting that Archelon might have persisted into the Maastrichtian period. Fossils from the Maastrichtian age Kansas Pierre shale deposits could indicate that Archelon survived longer than previously thought, possibly enduring millions of years into the Maastrichtian era. In the end, only one thing remains to be said. Archelon stands as a majestic symbol of the prehistoric world. It offers a peek into a bygone era when giants roamed the seas. Its colossal size, reaching up to 15 feet in length, truly makes it the king of the turtles. With its leathery shell and powerful jaws, Archelon likely navigated the depths of the late Cretaceous waters in search of prey. All of its fossils that have been recently pulled out give us remarkable insights into the prehistoric marine ecosystem. It's quite amazing how despite being beyond huge, this turtle was still not invincible in the scary waters of South Dakota. It faced challenges from predators like mosasaurs and sharks. Yet, its resilience and evolutionary adaptations tell you about the incredible diversity and survival strategies of ancient marine life. Today, Archelon's fossils serve as invaluable treasures, offering clues to understanding the mysteries of our planet's distant past. As we continue to explore and uncover the secrets of our natural world, Archelon will forever be the most amazing turtle that once lived beneath the waves. And that's a wrap. Looking back at its life, would you say this turtle's impressive size was more of an advantage for survival in its ancient ocean habitat? Or did it pose more challenges? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.